Hi everyone. The past few lessons we have been learning all about earth sciences. Today we're going to continue to learn about earth sciences, but before we do, I want to start off by looking at some pictures. Looking at those pictures, we looked at three different pictures. What did you notice? What did you see? The buildings looked like they had been slanted a little bit. Some of the buildings looked like they had even gone into the ground. And that last picture showed a couple of cars that looked like they were sinking into the ground. Kind of reminds me of quicksand, right? Looks like they were sinking. They didn't have control. No. What do you think happened? What do you think caused this to happen? Going back to this original picture, what we're going to discuss today is the topic of liquefaction. Liquefaction is a physical process that causes soils to temporarily lose strength and behave more like a fluid than a solid. Liquefaction causes soils to lose strength. And once liquefaction has occurred, the soil is no longer able to support the foundations of structures such as buildings and bridges. Once this happens, then high energy seismic waves like earthquakes pass through these sandy soils and they increase the water pressure and allow air contained inside the sediment to escape, causing mass destruction. Now, since we are not able to study earthquakes and liquefaction in the real world, what scientists like to do is modeling. What I have here is a plastic container, like a plastic shoebox, filled with dry sand. I'm going to put a large one kilogram weight on top of my sand. This is going to represent a large structure or building. And then using my mallet, I'm going to strike this plastic shoebox for 30 seconds and this is going to model my earthquake. And we're going to see what happens to a building that's, remember, on dry sand after an earthquake strikes for 30 seconds. So again, here is a model. The sand represents the ground. The one kilogram weight represents the building that's on the ground. And my mallet is going to simulate an earthquake. And now I'm going. Now we're going to simulate an earthquake by hitting the mallet against my container for 30 seconds. Now what's important to note is that my hits were constant and they were even. Now let's take a look and see what happened to our building and our land. Well, the land doesn't look like it was disturbed very much. The building did sink into the ground a little bit and it did tilt a little bit more. Now go ahead and record your results for what happened when there was an earthquake to the one kilogram weight on dry sand. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to simulate liquefaction. Now, liquefaction cannot happen on dry sand. This is sand that is more wet. So what you're going to need is a plastic container or a plastic shoebox. This is your sand and clay mixture that we saved from last week. You will also need some additional water. 
you will need a mallet or another object that you can strike your plastic shoe box with and any weight I have a one kilogram weight but something heavy a heavy object that you can place on there I have now just added my sand and clay mixture from last week into the container and then I'm going to use my hands just to break up some of the chunks and mix it around and you're going to have to add about a cup of water to get this to the right consist consistency so that we can test liquefaction. Now that your sand and clay mixture and your water have been well mixed inside of the container, I'm going to put my one kilogram weight right on top. And again, I'm going to strike with a mallet for 30 seconds. about 30 seconds and well look at that let's take a close-up look at my building my building was right on top and look at it now it has submerged under the ground and what's that thing that just popped up now remember we are modeling we are pretending that this is ground with big weight that represents a building and we have just caused an earthquake with my mallet and what we notice is look at that building it's about three quarters into the sand you only see one side of it up it's tilted down and the sand clay is covering my weight and you see a ping pong ball that popped up what is that now, before starting this lab, I didn't tell you that I had snuck a ping pong ball inside the ground. Now, when there was an earthquake, that ping pong ball that was all the way deep down popped up. That ping pong ball doesn't represent a ping pong ball at all. It actually represents things that are underground that can come up when liquefaction happens. What are those things that can come up? sewer system sewer lines yuck that's disgusting right but it's true do we want our buildings to go inside the ground no and do we want the sewer lines to come up no we don't want either one of those things to happen now what we saw a model of what just happened here is actually a very very big problem in the real world and in the real world we need to come up with a solution. Now, engineers will design and they will build structures and modify the land somehow to prevent from both the sewers coming up and from the buildings and cars sinking into the ground. What we're gonna do next is we are going to do an engineering activity. You will gather some recyclable materials from around your house and try to design something that will prevent this building from sinking into the ground. Some materials that I will be using for this engineering lab are plastic vials, wooden popsicle sticks, wooden tongue depressors, pebbles, cardboard pieces, plastic containers with lids, but do not feel limited 
to these items that I have. You may use anything else that you may have inside of your home. They may be made out of plastic, wood, aluminum. Use your imagination. Anything you have at home will be just fine. Now, before you get started, please go ahead and draw what your design will look like. Make a plan, think about how you want to use your materials, and before you start building, make a sketch. This is a good part in the video to pause and get your design going. Now remember, always a great idea to label as you are making your design. Now that I have my design ready, I'm going to go ahead and start building. Before I start building, I'm going to remove my weight that has pretty much been buried into the sand. I'm going to move it, clean it off a little bit. I'm going to take out my ping pong ball. We don't need this anymore. And then I'm going to just mix my sand and clay and water mixture and smooth it out and make my land even and flat and uniform all around. If you see pockets of water, distribute those evenly all around. And now you can start building your design. For my design, I decided to use four vials and fill them up with the pebbles and then cover the top with three long tongue depressors. Very simple design. I didn't have to use all the materials. I did add a little bit of extra tape just to make it more secure. Now, what I'm going to do is insert the new structure that I have designed and built inside under my ground. I had to add a little bit more um, of my soil and clay mixture to cover the entire structure completely because I don't want anything sticking out. Now we have my land and I'm going to put my building right on top and we are going to simulate an earthquake by using my mallet for 30 seconds watching what happens to my building. And 30. Wow, would you look at that? What happened to my building? My building is safe. It did not sink into the ground. It did not collapse. It did not tilt. Is the structure that I have built perfect? Well, not really. It's not perfect at all. Because what you'll notice is you can actually see where the structure is because I have cracks all around the ground all around where I have it the footprint of my structure like a normal earthquake that causes cracks in the ground has caused these cracks but the only thing that I was asked to do was to prevent the building from sinking was to make an improvement and did I make an improvement I sure did my building did not sink my building did not collapse it didn't tilt now, would this structure have helped my sewer system? Hmm, probably not, but it did help keep my building on top of the ground.
Today's lab, we were learning all about liquefaction, and in particular, we were engineers. We were building, we were designing and building a way to actually stop liquefaction from occurring. Now, I told you liquefaction is when the ground starts to act more like a fluid than a solid, which is not good. And when an earthquake happens, it causes the buildings and anything with weight actually to sink and tilt and to collapse. Now, we were asked to use a variety of different materials. Actually, you were not limited to materials <clears throat> at all. You were just limited to whatever you had in your own home, but you could use as little or as much as you wanted to design and to build something that would keep your building from sinking. Now your design and your structure may not be perfect and that's okay. They are never perfect the first time or the first hundred times. But as long as you helped the building survive a little bit, as long as you improved the situation even a little bit, that's a success. And even if you didn't improve it, still a success, right? You figured out something that doesn't work and that's huge too. What I want you to do is after you have tested your product, once you have tried it, make sure that you answer the follow-up questions on your sheet and see if you were able to improve. And if you were not, well, what did you learn? 